what we're doing here today is something called a one-stop shop and that involves inviting agencies from around the area to come on a specific day, usually the first Wednesday of every month. And it's for service users, staff, carers, family and friends. And it's an opportunity for people to come and see lots of different agencies in one place rather than having to travel to different areas. And they can offer advice, you can get information and support in things that you feel are relevant to your recovery. It just gives a chance for the patients, the staff, the families and carers to seek advice in one place. Saves them having to travel around Liverpool for to seek that advice. So for example, you know, they may want to seek advice about debt that they may be in. They may have to go to the CAB in Walton and then they may be seeking employment support advice and they may get told, oh, you've got to travel to Garston for that one. So to save people travelling all over Liverpool, then they can just come here and seek any advice they need, be it employment support, housing support, whatever advice they need, there's normally someone here who can give them that advice. Sometimes the families need advice about things, so um, they, ha they have found it really useful. And the fact that everything is together, so it's, again, it's not travelling. And we we put out flyers, and we've you know for other hospitals as well. So it's not just for here. It's meant to be sort of a community project. So people from outside, you know, sort of early intervention groups, you know, community groups. Anybody's welcome if they can get some benefit from it. Uh, my name is John Mousley. I'm a mental health specialist for Citizens Advice Sefton, and I'm here today to do uh, take a table at the One Stop Shop event, which is the first Wednesday of every month for all outside agencies. Ordinarily, I'm here every Thursday and Friday, so I will cover mostly benefits related inquiries, but we'll deal with um, finance, debts, housing, anything really. But by and large, it's driven by uh, service users and their requests, which tend to be disability benefits. And I've seen that over the years, people are driven into hospital through debt, and it is absolutely just debt. They'll, they'll, they'll be overwhelmed by the amount of money that they're owed, um, they'll be suicidal and a tablet's not going to take that away. Um, we talk talking therapies, but they go home and they're being faced with threatening letters from bailiffs, uh, threats to lose their home, evictions, no money, no money to pay gas, electric, pay for food, um, a lot of social factors, driving people into hospital, keeps them in hospital too. You know, they come into hospital and if these issues aren't resolved, the hospital can't discharge anybody to go home to one suitable accommodation or with no furniture or no income. Employment is really important for people, obviously, especially when they're into the recovery. I mean, because not only that, it gives them a routine to the week, it gives them a meaningful life, and people are already unemployed. It's so easy just to, just to slot them back into it. Uh, they've got sort of like, they've lost their homes, they've lost their jobs, they've lost families. By keeping employment and starting employment, it gives them an opportunity to get all this back, and this is where we work with them. There's no time limits on what we take, it's as long as that takes to that person to get what they want. We've had quite a few people come through, especially on their first episode of illness, um, or actually inpatients at the moment, who are currently employed and are worried about um, speaking to their employers, will their jobs still be open for them when they're, when they're better? And that's how we come in, we'll actually take them on board and support them through that process. Uh, we will support them back to, to back to work interviews, HR um, meetings, uh, we're very good at setting up phase returns that suit that person. Um, so it's just a bit of a lifeline, I think, for someone who's got a job to know that even though they have had a mental health problem and been in hospital, their job will be open for them when they go back. That is their right. We work with people with all sorts of illnesses who can hold down a job, no problem at all. Sometimes we may need a little bit of extra support from an employment advisor or somebody else from the team, um, but with the right support, anyone can work, anyone can work. Part of the company expect um, is the day services. Um, there are other branches from that as well, but I am the manager there, so I've come down here um, to explain what we do. And we have the Bowersdale Resource Centre, which is um, based in Seaforth in Livland. Um, that's where there is a drop-in that's open. Um, we're open Monday through to Sunday, um, varying times, which you can contact us um, for those times. Um, generally, uh, Monday to Thursday, we're open 9am till 7.30pm, so there's always somebody there uh, that you can come and speak to. 
We also offer our activities program, which people are free to join or not join. They can just come and sit in, in our centre and um, just to take some time out if they wish or just to get away from home, which is what a lot of people social isolate social isolation is the problem. So that's what we're there to try and help with. Um, and we also have a drop-in in McGull, which is based at the Methodist Church in McGull. Um, we don't have a structured activity programme because that's not what the service users require there. It's um, a literal drop-in where they come and have a cup of tea and a chat and a, a biscuit. Um, and in Southport we've just um, started a project working with a consortium called Samhawk. Um, and we are developing a Southport drop-in, mental health drop-in. It's extremely important for people having centres like ourselves um, because when, when they're in patients, that, that's what they're used to, they're used to that environment. Um, and to just be put back into, into the community on their own, um, they can get lost and you know they can relapse. Um, so having centres like ourselves and drop-ins um, in the areas we've got them it, it ensures that they know that they've got people that they can come and talk to if they need. Uh, we signpost to the appropriate people that they require. We also um, have people that hit financial difficulty or the housing's not appropriate. So although we don't, we don't deal with those issues, we know the people that do and we can help those people. Sometimes, you know, it, it, people don't know who to go to and, it, and they don't trust people either at times. So they come to us they've built up a trust, they've built up this a friendship I suppose um, and they, they know that we'll direct them in the right way.